Good evening and thank you for joining us for the patient education uh, series of 2022 of the Comprehensive MS Center. Tonight, uh, we, uh, our topic is Black Americans and Multiple Sclerosis Update 2022. I'm happy that Dr. Okai has found time to join us uh, tonight and present. And and this next section is the diagnosis and monitoring of MS. And I will use this as uh, a stepping stone to talk about how the diagnosis of MS came about over time. So the classic definition of multiple sclerosis is that someone must have dissemination in time and space. So they should have two separate attacks and in different places of the central nervous system to meet the diagnosis of multiple uh, sclerosis. Once again, the diagnosis should occur at different point in time and not at the same time. And we have to rule out other possible, other possible diagnosis because inflammatory or autoimmune uh, uh, disorders can sometimes mimic each other. So we have to rule out other possible diagnosis uh, of multiple sclerosis uh, that could look like MS before we make the diagnosis of MS. MS has been around for a long period of time and making the diagnosis have been complicated, but the first time we ever had a criteria to say this is what we consider MS came all the way back in 1965. And that diagnosis has evolved over time and to what we have today. And so the latest uh, uh, criteria is called the McDonald criteria and the latest version is the 2017 version. And so this is a busy slide, but what it says that we can make the diagnosis of MS based on the classic definition of having different uh, episodes at different time in different parts of the central nervous system. But what if someone does not meet uh, that criteria and they only had one attack or they have symptoms that look at MS based on the, uh, based on the uh, testing modalities that we have at this time, including MRI, use of the uh, 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 lumbar puncture results or CSF, we can make the diagnosis earlier in patients instead of waiting for a second attack over time. All right, so I, I talked a little bit of how uh, uh, MRI has made the diagnosis of MS uh, uh, easier and, and help us to make it earlier. So let's look at what is required on an MRI to make the diagnosis of MS. So there are several things we look, look at when we're making the MS diagnosis. And so I like to tell patients not every white spot on your MRI is uh, related to MS. There can be various causes, but we look into certain places. And I will start with where we look at here. So we look at the periventricular area. These are areas near the ventricles of the brain, those hold fluid. And that's one place that we look at and that meets the criteria, the McDonald criteria. Then we look at lower, uh, the lower part of the, uh, of the brain is called the infratentoria, so the lower part of the brain. And that includes the spinal cord to look for uh, uh, areas of damage or lesions. And then we look at areas near the cortex and then we also look to see if there is ongoing activity. So when, the, when you are given gadolinium or IV dye during your scan, is to look to see if inflammation is occurring at that time to tell us if the acuity of the lesion or how early or how lit is going on. And then for the spinal tap, we have looked for oligoclonal bands. These are proteins that we see in the spinal fluid. 
and we can, uh, if the MRI is not, uh, isn't giving us the full uh, 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 diagnosis that we would like to see, we can use this as an additional test to help make the diagnosis. So we take the fluid and put it on the gel, and we and in normal, uh, uh, in a normal state what we see in this final fluid should be the same as what we see in the blood, but in an MS patient or other inflammatories, that may, that may be different. We may see more of these oligoclonal bands in the spinal fluid than we see in the blood, and that's a positive spinal tap. So MS lesions, where are they and where, and where uh, or where, where do we find him? I talked about the periventricular and the just the cortical lesions and the infratentorial lesions over time. And these are classic uh, uh, places for uh, MS activity over time. Fortunately, we do not have to do biopsies as uh, uh, to make the diagnosis of MS. But if we had to do bi uh, uh, a biopsies, we will see that these lesions are occurring around areas of the uh, blood vessels um, that have most of these inflammatory cells traveling over time. And that's what we see on these slides. But uh, while MRI has really changed the face of MS and making a diagnosis of MS, there are still some limitations that we have. And every day we are uncovering more about MS lesions uh, over time and how we can use them to uh, uh, make various prognostic factors. Uh, some of the limitations of the MRIs that we need is that it does not look at what we call the gray matter involvement. So the uh, cortical cortex and uh, uh, the gray matter or the deep gray matter have been associated with cognition, uh, with changes in cognition on, in MS patients. And because our MRI aren't the best at looking at these areas, it's hard to really determine the, uh, uh, the cognitive effect if we cannot see the gray matter. When we are uh, looking at MS patients and trying to make tre treatment decisions, we look at various prognostic factors when it comes to patient term. We look at, okay, how did the pre patient present? And, and as you can see on this slide, we have what we call favorable and unfavorable. So uh, it's, it's good if the uh, attack rate is very low and there's a longer time to relapses. It's also a favorable uh, prognostic factors when uh, the, uh, the patient recovers completely from, a, uh, from their first attack. They're younger when they're diagnosed, females, and they have very low disability two to five years. It's unfavorable when there are uh, frequent relapses in shorter periods of time, older age of onset, uh, early development of a uh, disability, and uh, border symptoms just continue to come up slowly. When we look at the MRI, it is. Uh, it also help us make pro uh, prognostic factors, and this is a, a classic uh, study uh, in MS. When we look at the MRI, the number of lesions that we see on the first uh, MRI that the patient presents with, present with uh, uh, tells uh, 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 tells us the potential for disability at three to five years. And greater than uh, the more lesions you have, the higher the potential for disability. So um, let's talk specifically about Blacks in MS and the initial presentation over time. So uh, compared to Caucasian counterparts, we see that uh, once again, female sex is very high. The age of onset in uh, African-Americans is a little bit older in this cohort. Um, 
And then the multiple scler sclerosis severity scale is higher in Blacks compared to Caucasian Americans. And Blacks are more likely to present with transverse myelitis, that's inflammation of the spinal cord. And if your spinal cord is affected, that, that usually affects your walking or motor symptoms or, or dexterity or upper extremity symptoms leading to uh, an increase in disability. And with, with black patients, we have motor symptoms presenting uh, very frequently compared to their uh, Caucasian counterparts. All right, so monitoring of MS, uh, the clinical way we do it is uh, uh, looking at relapses and, and doing an exam and looking at disability progression. So it's important that you know uh, relapses are recorded so action can be taken uh, uh, very early and that the clinical exam is taken into consideration. Obviously with COVID uh, and, tel and the advent of telemedicine, sometimes disability uh, uh, progression can be missed if it's all virtual. So it's important to at least see the healthcare provider uh, uh, at some uh, interval instead of just um, uh, 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 virtual visits uh, most of the time. Another way we uh, monitor MS is uh, with MRIs. So we look at active lesions on MRIs and we look at enlarging uh, a T2 lesions as we call it. And this also help us to make decisions when it comes to uh, um, uh, treatment, what we need to do and how we need to uh, uh, make uh, treatment decisions over the years. All right, so um, I talk about this early on in a few slides that we do not have a specific blood test to make the diagnosis of, of MS. And by the time the individual, uh, someone presents with MS, they may have had it for years because they have had contact with the uh, uh, healthcare systems. MRI is very important in diagnosing MS and monitoring uh, 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 our treatment response to MS, but it's very limited when it comes to looking at other measures, including those of cognition. Um, as, as we make the diagnosis of MS, we also have to make sure that other autoimmune conditions uh, do not come into play. And so we have to uh, rule out uh, any type of inflammatory disease or autoimmune disease. Type one diabetes uh, is very common and that's something we have to make sure is, uh, does not occur. Psoriasis, asthma, uh, inflammatory by, uh, bowel disease, all of these are autoimmune conditions that can mimic MS, but they also occur more frequently in MS. So um, sometimes with a, a patient comes and say, well, I've just been diagnosed with thyroid disease. I say, well, that is not uncommon because it, you we really find those two diseases occurring very uh, uh, in clusters in patients. All right, uh, depression and anxiety. So mood issues are something that MS patients experience over time. The number here is 27, uh, 23%, but I, I can say that it, I will suspect it's way higher than that. And then I also have to remind patients that even though you have MS, there are other diseases that you can still uh, uh, have. So it's good to follow up with your primary care physician. We see that cerebral vascular, a cardiovascular disease, very uh, prevalent in MS patients. Uh, so heart attack can, can occur in MS patients. Stroke can occur in MS patients. Having MS does not give you a free pass to uh, having these diseases. So those have to be uh, hypertension, diabetes, they all have to be managed well if they occur in the context of MS. So with this slide, I hope I have taken you through how MS is diagnosed, what we look for, the differences between Blacks versus white patients, and how we monitor for disease progression 
over time. 